call, please. Councilman Murphy? Here. Councilman Burnham? Here. Councilwoman Horgan? Here. Councilwoman Lewis? Here. Councilman Zipperich? Here. Councilman DuPont? Here. Okay. Um, second statement. Let the minutes reflect that in compliance with Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, Open Public Meetings Act, that notice of this meeting has been provided by notifying the Asbury Park Press, the Two River Times, and the Star Ledger, and by placing a notice on the bulletin board and filing the same with the borough clerk on January 1, 2014. Thank you. Is there a motion to suspend the regular order of business? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have this evening uh, the annual Community Development Block Grant Public Hearing and we'll turn it over to the um, borough administrator about a proposed project with respect to uh, the primary school and also parts of the west side of the Canada going forward for the greater part of 20 years. Go ahead. I just got a promotion. Now the borough administrator. <laughs> <laughs> pays less. <laughs> it pays less. <laughs> so if you want to take the job, we'll make a change right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Every other year, the Borough of Red Bank is eligible to submit a grant application to Monmouth County under the Community Development Block Grant Program. And this year, what we're proposing is a improvement to the pathway that exists uh, to the primary school. Right now, it's a public right-of-way called Locust Place. Locust Place um, is at the western terminus of Locust Avenue and connects through a wooded area to the primary school. Um, you can see I have a couple pictures. You can see that this pathway uh, is used on a daily basis during the school year. Students uh, walking and bicycling to school. Uh, recently, the Board of Ed did post no trespassing signs on the pathway um, for the reason because it's not improved. Uh, this project has been on the books for quite some time. It was referenced in our um, bicycle and pedestrian plan, which the borough has adopted as part of its master plan. Um, it's something that the uh, police and fire departments are in favor of because not only does it provide daily access for bicycle and pedestrians to get to school, but it also allows for a secondary emergency um, access point to the primary school. Right now, if there were an emergency, everyone would be evacuating by uh, River Street East, and the police and fire uh, emergency responders would be coming, attempting to come in the opposite direction. So what, would be, what we would be doing is um, installing a uh, porous pavement uh, roadway, essentially, it's just a little bit wider than a, a walkway, but it would have um, bollards on either end with a, a chain so that daily cars and vehicles cannot you know, traverse that pathway, but it could be used by um, students, parents trying to get their, their uh, back and forth to school. Um, the roadway is about 700 feet. Um, as you can see from the pictures, depending on the season, it can be quite muddy, it can be quite overgrown, um, it can be quite snow-filled. So by having um, a paved access way, we can kind of reduce the effect of weather on the pathway so that during the school year, students can use it you know, every day. Um, so essentially that's the project in a nutshell. I think some of you may have heard about this project many times in the past. Um, does anyone have any questions? Any members of the council have any questions? Uh, something, again, as Christine said, we have been talking about for the greater part of many years and it's finally, hopefully, will come to fruition. I know it's supported by the Board of Education and Administrative Staff and also by our emergency management individuals. If the council has no questions, any members of the public have any questions? I, I, I just have one, one question, Christine. Are there any utilities that uh, traverse that path that service the school or, or any of the other uh, portion of the municipality? There's no utilities now. Um, what we're planning on doing as part of this project, but not funded as part of the grant application, is um, looping the water main from Locust Avenue to River Street, you know, to the school. Um, 
what that will do will give improved uh, fire flow and fire protection to the school. Um, we wouldn't do that normally because we would never be able to maintain the water main through there. But um, you know, looping a water system is always the better way to go. So that will be done, if we're funded, that will be done as part of the project. Um, but it is not included as part of the uh, funded portion of the project, of the grant application. And does the, does the Board of Education have an opportunity to apply for a, a grant for this roadway as well? No, uh, it, it's not. Um, education facilities are not eligible for this funding. Mayor, I just want to point out, I, I think this is a great plan. Um, you know, it kind of evidence is the fact that good things come to those who dream. And, you know, it's going to promote the safety of our kids. Um, I know I had a similar path when I walked to uh, Washington Irving in Springfield, Virginia. And uh, I know that it uh, certainly reassured my mom that, you know, I was walking safely, uh, that it was, it was in good shape, uh, you know, I didn't have to traverse through the woods, um, which I did often. I think it's just great for our kids. Um, you know, I, I must admit, uh, Latina did a great job. You know, just about being progressive, but also promoting our kids' safety. And being the father of three and one who's going off to college, a set of twins or a set of seven, you know, first and foremost in your mind is when they're traveling to school, is they are they safe? You know, are they going to make it to school? Do we have the crosswalks? You know, I love this path. I think it's just a great, great thing. Um, so I, I fully support this project. It, it's a benefit for the health of the students to maybe encourage some more um, students part, to walk part, maybe by Maybe part of the mayor's wellness campaign school. there. Um, but also for, for safety for our students there by providing you know, uh, emergency access for our first responders. That's a big, that's a big thing. I mean, uh, you know, walk, having the kids walk to school um, is a great uh, I think gift for those of us who live in Red Bank. Uh, I just love the idea that our kids are going to have an opportunity to um, feel safe walking to school. Not that they don't feel safe now, but it's from a closed environment. Walking uh, on a path that's obviously going to be monitored. Uh, we'll have all the necessary accessories associated with a uh, you know, path directly to school. And um, I'm sure that the Board of Education is going to support this 110 percent. But I think it's just evidence of the fact that if, if you dream it, you know, um, it can come to reality. Right? I love the idea, and being a walker to school myself, I hate to take the bus. It was a good plan. Um, I, can I ask a question? Um, um, my question is, um, you had said it was porous. Porous blacktop. Could you explain to all of us porous what porous blacktop is? Sure. Uh, it, it, on the surface, it actually looks like normal asphalt. Um, it has larger voids than uh, your standard asphalt, uh, so it allows a little bit more uh, infiltration through it. Um, there's a small portion of, of the area that's, um, you know, a wetlands area, so um, we don't want to. We're trying to mitigate uh, with this project and not do and have any adverse effects on on that small wetlands area. So, um, you know, it's just a little bit different asphalt. When you look at it, you know, especially from a distance, you can't tell. Up, up close, you can see the, the voids a little bit better. Right. And you had said that it takes a little more care because when the sand gets in it. Right. It does require um, maintenance so that it, it functions properly. Um, but I just, I, I'd rather. You know, knowing what the DEP is going to probably require, you know, yeah. we should um, go down that route. Thank you. Yeah. Mayor, just Mayor, just for the record, on on, uh, on touching what Michael Dupont, uh, Councilman Dupont, had mentioned, is there going to be lighting on this path? Any illumination? Uh, right now, I I don't have illumination. We can certainly uh, include oh, that. Oh, just a question. Yeah. Right now, no, but it. It can certainly, the application, you know, it has not yet been submitted. This is the public portion of it. If that's something you'd like included, we can certainly, um, you know, factor that in. Yes, and the, and the good councilman also mentioned that it's going to be monitored. How's that going to be monitored? Because you tell me there's cameras. 
or is he? Did you see him on? Yeah, I presume. I presume that there'd be uh, board of education uh, representatives along, or you know, during the school uh, school walking session, that they're going to have you know monitors at both ends, so the kids don't get lost and they won't veer off the path. I'm just presuming. Yeah, pretty, I, I don't know how they're going to. Yeah, it's pretty much a dead run from point A to point B. Right. I was just curious when you mentioned it. And uh, secondly, Mayor, um, as you know, the firemen and the police support is uh, highly and, uh, you know, first of all, for the children walking, but mostly for emergency use only. Uh, God forbid something that does happen at the primary school with everybody, you know, piling up the hill trying to get out on a one way in and a one way out. Now we have a set, second entrance to let the emergency vehicles in to properly do what they need to be doing in, in case of an emergency. So it's something like, uh, something you have been talking about over the years, Mayor, and hopefully the grant will come through. Thank you. Well, all I can say is that everything that's been expressed has, has been uh, previously expressed by other councils and by other mayors. I can assure you that I'll do whatever I can to reach out to the freeholders and make sure that they support this initiative. It's a public safety initiative and it goes in with our philosophy to putting these grants out where people live instead of in isolated areas. And I can't think of a better place that serves not only the public interest, but also the community interest as well, and also our children. So um, I'm hopeful, and I'll do whatever I can in terms of moving it along with the three members. Okay, if there are no other, no other comments from the public, uh, Steve, you have a comment to see? Question? Yes, please, come on up. One thirty-five branch at the Stephen Hay. Um, is there a matching portion to this grant? No. No. These are community yeah. development block grants, which are given by the federal government to the state. Then the state allocates it to the counties, and the counties then make it available to the municipality. So it's a direct federal grant. If we ask for X amount of money and they give us Y amount of money, we would have to make up the difference or tailor the project. That's an option. But that's always an option. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Motion to close. So moved, Mayor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to resume the regular order of business. So moved, Mayor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Workshop Green Team. Uh, Kathy, are you addressing yeah. that? As well as the participation in the Regional Greenhouse Gas, initi gas yes. Initiative. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I am. It's hard to say. That's what they say, Reggie. <laughs> um, the Environmental Commission met last night, and there were two resolutions that they asked that we put on the agenda today that they had unanimously approved. And the first one is the Green Team, and um, I mentioned this in the past that uh, the Environmental Commission a couple years ago had um, started to um, apply for certification with the Sustainable Jersey Program, um, which um, funds which eventually would fund uh, or um, make, would allow the borough to be eligible to receive funding from various sources. Uh, it's to put in place environmental um, components uh, to deal with uh, environmental initiatives. Um, it kind of, the environmental commissions, um, uh, their, the Sustainable Jersey program kind of fell dormant for a while. They're now uh, reconstituting it. They're launching um, with great gusto, I might add. They're very, uh, very, very uh, involved in working hard to, uh, um, um, as, you know, to reach this uh, certification with uh, the Sustainable Jersey program. But the first thing you have to do is have a green team, which really provides leadership. And the green team uh, comes, uh, should be composed of all walks of society, actually, government, schools, businesses. Um, it could be other um, committees, uh, borough committees, um, private citizens, whomever. So uh, they, the Environmental Commission has talked to various people who have agreed to be on the green team. And um, we will be voting on that tonight. Um, Mayor, did you want to read the names of the people? Because you will really be appointing them. Sure. Yeah. Green team uh, committee that have been recommended, and there's certainly no reason not to go along with the recommendation, would be James Scavone on behalf of River Center, 
Deputy Kernahan, um, member of the business community, Laura Darty, uh, the Environmental Commission, Amanda Brock, uh, also from um, the business community, Councilwoman Morgan, uh, Director Gary Watson from Public Works, Maria Rosla from uh, Recycling Coordinator, Boris Kaufman from the Shade Tree Commission, and uh, Helene Weisskum and Laura Bagwell from the Environmental Commission. All of which names are eminently qualified and served in the past and gladly appoint those names. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next resolution. <coughs> Kathy, is Kathy, excuse yeah, me, before you move on to the next one, I just wanted to make one comment. Yeah. You said that the sustainable uh, the Jersey um, uh, project sort of fell off because of the, some of the people disappeared from the, from the green team. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And what I want to remind yeah. you is that the borough didn't fall off of its initiatives because there were several things that took place in, right. in, in the absence of those members um, that uh, the Environmental Commission was able to use for credit towards Sustainable Jersey. Right. So and we're still headed in the right direction. Right. And thank you for bringing those to the attention of the Environmental Commission. That's really appreciated. Thank you, Ed. Um, now on to the Regional Greenhouse Gas, in gas Initiative. I'm having a problem You're too. The same problem. I'm having the same, <laughs> same problem. Um, this is an initiative um, by nine states in the Northeast in the United States and several provinces in Canada, in Northeast Canada, to reduce dangerous climate changing pollution from power plants. Um, it's a trade and cap model. I won't go into all of the technical aspects, but New Jersey used to belong to it. And in 2011, the governor um, took us away from it. And um, this is a really uh, serious environmental issue. And um, what we're doing tonight is passing a resolution urging the Christie administration to um, put us back onto this initiative. Um, the, um, back in April, the New Jersey Superior Court ruled that the Christie administration illegally pulled the state out of Reggie. Um, and now we're encouraging the Christie administration to reinstate us on this initiative. Um, more than 80% of New Jerseyans support limits on global warming pollution from power plants. So that's it in a nutshell. And uh, that's another, um, another resolution that we'll be hopefully approving tonight, as well as the Green Team resolution. And uh, I forgot to mention, under the Green Team, uh, they will be meeting Tuesday, July 22nd at 6 p.m. right here. And they'll be followed by the regular Environmental Commission meeting at 7 o'clock. So they'll be meeting on the um, fourth Tuesday of every month, just before the Environmental Commission meeting. And that is it. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, workshop. Uh, moving on to approval of the minutes. Well, Mayor, 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 I just got a couple things for workshop. Okay. Um, I was up in uh, Hoboken and uh, was also uh, in Europe um, with my wife. Um, past couple days, and um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see, I know that we had our pedestrian safety uh, initiative um, and also bike lanes, but for example, um, in, um, where I was in uh, Europe, uh, particularly in Ireland, uh, they had bike lanes. Um, it's kind of tied in with the uh, CDBG grant right there, you know, we want our kids to bike to school, and um, what I kind of envision is, is having, if anyone's been up to the Hoboken, you see the bike lanes that are down these streets, and it would be kind of nice if we could uh, pursue uh, that uh, initiative, uh, having bike lanes um, you know, down our streets that we own. Um, and you know, potentially, I know that, um, at least according to a study that was done uh, recently up in New York City and also in the Netherlands, but according to this, is the bike lanes save lives. And what I kind of envision, I know it's been a big success up in New York, I don't know if it'll be a success here in Red Bank, but um, you know, the city bikes, you know, it'd be kind of nice if you could have a rental bike or a city bike at the train station and then you have a bike station in Broad Street, you know, if you have to travel to one of the brokerage houses or one of the stores. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, again, there wasn't enough demand. 
Well, again, you know, we dreamed and we're, we're building a path. I'm sorry. We're, we're dreaming, we're building a path. No, no, I, I think bike lanes are an extraordinary event. And I think we, uh, what you probably were not aware of is we're going to have a resolution uh, either at the next meeting or the following meeting that has been coordinated by Mayor Lucarelli uh, in Fair Haven, which actually is a very interesting prospect which we've been talking to him about, which will tie in a bike lane that hopefully will be funded by our regional government, the, the county, uh, or other entities in terms of coordinating bike lanes for most of the Two River area towns, inclusive of Red Bank, uh, to the Henry Hudson Trail also, as well as the, uh, the coastal areas going all the way what down I, to what, I, what I was trying to accomplish, though, was have bike lanes to and from our various schools, you know, the, the middle school, the charter school, uh, our high school. Um, I was really impressed with Hoboken did. You know, Hoboken is known for its inadequate parking, but yet there's bike lanes all all over the city. Yeah, it, it would be a really terrific expansion of what we what we started when we adopted the bicycle and pedestrian plan. But that was that was years ago. We need to we need to do more than just propose. I think we that have if, we have been actually uh, with every road program we've been installing a, a piece of the bike lanes that were outlined in our uh, bicycle and pedestrian report. Um, we have completed to date Peter's Place, Chestnut Street. Yeah, Chestnut, um, I see that. But you know what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a, a legitimate bike lane where there are designated areas um, where you ride a bike. Right. You know? Bridge Avenue uh, will have designated lanes. Bridge Avenue is wide enough. The difficulty is when you don't have a road that isn't quite wide enough, you lose parking. On well, you know, but, they, but, they, but the reason there. why I don't buy that argument is just because Hoboken is very narrow, and yet they have parking, and they have. Now, don't get me wrong. And those of you who bike up in North Jersey, I'm sure that there's always that dangerous issue where you open a door and that bike is going to be um, an accident. So if one of our reporters going to test that. Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say anything, but again. Um, I'm, you know, you see it in movies, but I'm sure that happens frequently. So, you know, if we could do that, you know, and take an initiative and, and actually designate the bike lanes with lines, so uh, to and from our schools, I just think that, you know, it's a great initiative that everyone can, can jump onto, and it's not that expensive. I think our planner and our engineer just needs to say, hey, look, this is a good street, this is a good street, this is what our problems are, but. We were recently awarded grant funds for Bridge Avenue because we included bike lanes, right. specific designated bike lanes on Bridge Avenue. And, and one of the reasons why I bring it up is because um, you know, my twins are now by the bike and I feel like a, a, a mother duckling. You know, you're, I want them close and I want them going too fast, and um, especially down Broad Street, right? There's no place to ride on Broad Street except the sidewalks. And then you're worried about them crashing into the pedestrians and you're not supposed to ride on a bike but you know seven year olds you can't put them on broad street so you know if we had a bike lane um, maybe i'd have a few more hairs um, and uh, maybe not but it, it needs to certainly help me then uh, mayor one a couple other things is Wait, could i could i expound on that just one sec sure. it was an idea that i that i had and maybe it's sure. crazy or not but i thought of this and i'll just say it out loud if we made broad street and probably everyone will hate this but if we made Broad Street a one-way from, say, Monmouth to Front, we could do a bike lane. I don't think you need to make it one way. I mean, the town's not... It's just a crazy thought. No, it's not a crazy thought. The reason I why... I was thinking of putting bike Well, I guess the, the reason why I kind of like the... the it's, it's, I'm just saying this offhand. Not, not that I just like the idea. It's no. just that when I was in the towns, again, our businesses obviously require traffic, you know, pedestrian and motor vehicle. And to eliminate traffic going both ways, um, like and I'm, and give, just using the example of Hoboken, they had streets with both streets, with you know both ways with a bike lane. Well, you could still do that with a bike lane on one I, side. I, I was just thinking if you did a bike, if you did a yeah, one way, you could have a bike lane on both sides. The problem that I sides. saw of seeing it in New York City, it's it, it's just chaos when they do that. I'd rather see it and organized uh, from an engineer and planning aspect. But you know, it certainly because these. You know, before she reaches motherhood, she'll, she'll get that down for us. One other other thing, uh, Mayor. Um, 
Uh, two months ago, um, Governor Christie signed a bill which authorizes Ms. Pauley's to impose penalty on, on mortgage companies that fail to timely remedy code violations and or abate nuisances on vacant residential properties in foreclosure even if the mortgager does not own the property and has no intention of taking it. So um, I wanted to point out, because I know um, I think either Juanita or Ed Zippert pointed that to me uh, out about the new legislation. And so, you know, I know code has been active um, in the last two days, but I know that um, with the growing foreclosures and borrowers' inability to make uh, you know, make the repairs, this this now allows municipalities to go ahead and find them. So uh, the bill is um, A347. Uh, it was signed into... Um, uh, law on May 15th and establish a procedure for outlining the mortgager's responsibility to inform the municipal clerk that it instituted a foreclosure action and the municipality's right to send a notice to the mortgage or uh, mortgagee demanding that the remedy that it remedy any and all nuisances and if not then you can go ahead and do that so maybe maybe I could get a copy of that sure oh great thank you sure. and then with, with respect to um, our signs Seems like we've been active on signs, but before I begin uh, this dissertation on signs, um, I was reading an article, matter of fact, in the New York Times, and uh, um, Chatham's sign was in the arts and leisure section of the New York Times. And I looked at our signs. They're terrible. The Red Bank is a destination place. And I think, I'm hoping that, you know, uh, we can put up a sign, and I don't know if we have the ability to put up a sign at the new Walgreens or that place. Uh, our signs over at the Exxon station, they're dilapidated. Our signs over there that the new Hampton Inn, maybe if when the Hampton Inn goes up before the planning board. Uh, Look at the mac and cheese sign on Broad Street. He's referring he's to municipal oh, signs. Okay, all right. Well, I'm, I'm thinking signs because no, I'm voting. He's referring to welcome to Red Bank. Not welcome to Mac and Cheese. Okay. I'm talking. I'm talking. <laughs> welcome to Red Bank. Um, okay. I think that we need to do something about those signs, Mayor. You've been here the longest. I don't know who paid for those signs. Well, I, I can tell you the signs you're referring to were graciously paid for by the business community. And they were paid for it some time ago, and I am sure that if we put our heads together, we can reach out to the business community and they can sponsor the science. Well, you know, maybe we can come up with some designs. I, I think that they're going to need some guidance. Um, the, the points that you're referring to um, are all going to be centrifugal points. You know, obviously, the entrance on the front street side, on the front street bridge, is going to have a new, whole new vista to Red Bank. Um, so I think it's an appropriate time to, 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 for us to think about. Uh, I think that no matter what happens on uh, the Route 35 bridge, that's a, a great opportunity for us to, uh, to put something there. And, um, and same thing with some of our other signs that are non-residential entrance signs. Well, so we, 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 well, we just need, I think, we just need to have a vision as to what we would like to see. Maybe we can go to the vision committee. You don't want to... That'll take six months. Yeah, well, all, just, all it takes is a couple of you guys to sit down and figure out what it is. Well, I, I hear my speak to, our, speak to uh, our uh, borough engineer director for the Center. Center. That's all. Then the, the next, uh, while we're on the subject of signs, I have to be honest with you, over the past court, a couple of days, I have received, God bless you, I have received more um, inputs regarding uh, signs, uh, awnings, illuminated signs, Apparently, we had a, uh, an enforcement blitz on signs uh, between May 20th and May 22nd. And many of the restaurants that um, I visited uh, complained bitterly about um, these, um, this enforcement. And I asked uh, Mr. Sickles to kind of clue me in. And I know, Cindy, this is your uh, department, and I'm sure you're well aware of it. I wasn't aware of it. I'm just, I was just hearing it from, for example, when I went to the um, Fins and Feathers to buy one of my dog's foods, you know, the, the, I, I heard all about it. Um, and so it appears... Well, if you'd like me to explain it to you, I, I, I can... Well, hold on. Let me, let me just, let me okay. finish, let me finish what I found, and then you can fill me in with what, what uh, you've been uh, pushing. And um, so... 
it appears that, uh, you know, and I asked um, uh, Mr. O'Hearn, Dan O'Hearn, for a copy of our signed ordinance, and it is lengthy, it is convoluted, um, and it needs changing. Uh, many of our business owners, you know, really rely on their uh, signs. Um, I asked uh, what what was the push on the, on the on the violations, and apparently between uh, May 20th and May 22nd, uh, we had uh, in excess of uh, 37 or uh, 37 violations. And, and hearing the complaints of our business owners, I asked for a breakdown or an itemization of this sign enforcement. I didn't realize that it was such an issue. Um, and apparently, there was uh, there were 26 uh, violations for illuminated signs, and illuminated signs apparently deal with open, closed. Um, and um, you know, many of our business owners are saying, "Look, this sign's been in here for many, many years." So we had about 26 uh, violations for uh, illuminated signs, four percent for four for window signs, and 11 for or I'm sorry, a few for awning and graphics and banners. Um, but almost 70% of the, the violations were all about illuminated signs. Um, some of them had been for years. Um, you know, the Heritage Liquor, Red Big Wine Liquors, uh, Brothers Restaurant. I mean, I mean, some of these violations have been for businesses that predate me and also um, have been in existence prior to the the elder statesman up on this board, Mr. Murphy and Mr. Mena. Um, and I'm just amazed that we are spending so much time, and I know Frankie Woods uh, has gone out and about for the last uh, two days, or May 20th to May 22nd, to issue these 37 violations, when in fact there's probably other issues that, we, that at least I know there's other issues that that are probably a little more important than neon signs or awning graphics or banners. Um, I haven't at all, and I've only served on this council a few years, I haven't ever seen a tidal wave of violations in such a short amount of time. I haven't ever seen complaints about the amount of signs, sign, size of signs, as I have received in the last week and a half. And this is because it was not enforced for so many years. So well, if, you, if you would allow me, Mr. Dupont, not, to I'm tell not, you not, when I'm it started. I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not okay, well, I can uh, solve all your problems with, you know, just tell me. Well, I don't think you can solve all those problems. Well, go ahead. Well, no, you're right. <laughs> no, 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 the sign I got, problems. I got, I got a lot of <laughs> I got a lot of problems. <laughs> so right now, I'm just trying. I know, but what I'm trying to do here, and I, and I understand that there may be some technical violations, especially for, for, this, for some businesses that have been in existence you know, for, for years and years and years. What I am, and I'm not um, you know, throwing a wrench into the enforcement. What I'm trying to do here is maybe what we should do is sit down with our borough attorney and our executive director for River Center and discuss amending this convoluted ordinance regarding signs. We've already done that. We've been there, we've done that. Well, I'm not quite sure if that's okay, the case. Hold on for a second. Let's go back, go back and forth. Yeah. Are you done, Michael? Right no. That? If that's the case, we, <laughs> would, we wouldn't be issuing a sign violation for Brothers Restaurant for illuminated sign. That's been there for long before I years. Long before. Pre-existing non-conforming, yes. I find, I find that the use of manpower for these two days to issue these 37 violations, a waste. We don't have that many employees. I think that the use of manpower to enforce what you were, what you, 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 that we should be enforcing on, for example, abandoned property, those overcrowded. I and think they that's are a, dealing with that too. I think, but that should be the number one priority. And well. what I think that we should do, since I received so many complaints, and the complaints were unison, in terms of what on earth are we doing? Because it hasn't been enforced. Anything that's never been enforced is going to cause a problem when you finally I mean, enforce. You know what? There's, there's a famous play called Les Mis. And part of Les Mis... Let's wrap it up so she can answer. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you could just let me give you the right 
again, a technical violation doesn't mean that we should be sending out violation notices and obstructing business and preventing businesses with, which, with little neon signs that say open. I think a better recourse is, is that maybe what we should do is talk to our management team here and say, and our attorney and also to our executive director, um, how, do we, how do we correct this? Now, I understand digging into this, way back when in 2013 of July, there were some suggestions that were made. And a letter was sent to our planning and zoning saying, hey, look, our sign ordinance needs to be changed. I think the best, and we need to tinker with it. And I don't know if it was done or apparently wasn't done because some of the charges and violations that are now being issued today were addressed in the correspondence of July of 2013. I just think that the use of our limited manpower and with the great engineer uh, creativity we have, together with our wonderful business district, we could probably remedy some of these sign issues without, without going and clogging up our courts, and more importantly, taking time, having our business owners take time. Now they got to go to court and pay. I don't know what the fine is for these things, but I have no idea. But I think just it's just a better use of time if we all get on the same page before we go hit the hammer and charge a violation for something that's been in existence 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, Elsie's, Elsie's I know has been here forever. Uh, brothers forever, fins and feathers, you know. I just, I think, and it's just my humble opinion, that I think that if we put our collective uh, heads together, and amended our ordinance together with the comments and suggestions of River Center in July 2013, we might, we might accomplish and avoid all of this energy. And so I just bring that up. That's all I had to say on signs. Are you sure? My, my, <laughs> my, well, again, Thank you for the signs because I'm going to fill you in. Well, we yeah, have, he's remember, finishing up, so he'll, he'll be done. Okay. Right, and so Frankie Woods has spent more time than my 15 minutes on discussion on signs enforcing um, neon sign violations uh, in the last two days between May 20th and May 22nd. Okay. So well, I, what, I, what I'm asking the board to do... You're, you're asking for a comprehensive review and analysis and revision of a sign ordinance which goes back 40 years, which has been looked upon by numerous councils and said, well, maybe it's too complicated, let's not do it. Let's tackle it now. Let's review it now. Thank you, Let's come up with a review. Right? Thanks, Mayor. Okay. And let me just tell you. Now you can answer. Thank you. We have been doing this since March 26th when we had a person complain about a sign that was put up without permission. It was, you know, in violation. We all got together, the mayors, Stanley, the code enforcers, and we had a meeting. And we said if, we, we didn't, I didn't know you were on there, and it's not my job to invite council people, right? Mr. Sickles, isn't it your no, job? No, you're the chair. It's your responsibility. Oh, I personally am supposed to invite the chair. You're the chairwoman. I mean, you two guys were on the committee, you didn't notice. No. Well, I didn't even know they were on the committee. You know what? Doreen makes the play. Doesn't Doreen make the... Cindy, 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 I don't, I don't feel personally slighted. You I mean, don't feel slighted, but I'm just trying to explain to you But that's okay, just explain to me. But the next time you have a meeting, I'll come. Okay. Well, we put it out to you last time. No, you had a meeting at then. Three o'clock in the afternoon. That's it? when that's when they plan it. It but has you, no, nothing to do with me. But just, the meeting, where you look good the chair. I, I don't have a problem. You control it. Just let me know. Thanks. No, I don't control it. I say to to, to Mr. Sickles, we need to have a meeting. Just, just as a okay. clarification, Councilwoman, you are the committee chairperson. You call the meeting. You set the time. You set the agenda. And if they want to show up, or any members of the committee or experts want to show up, that's up to them. Well, that's not but how you it's set, to me. Well, what I'm saying is that you set okay. the time, you call the meeting. I, that's your prerogative. We'll make sure okay. everybody's well, notified next time. Thank you. Because I said to Doreen at the last meeting, Mr. Staples, to invite Kathy and, and Michael. So okay. I, I can't come in the middle of the afternoon. Okay. The evening meeting would be better. Well, I don't. I don't think they can do that. But anyway, so anyway, March 26th, there was a complaint about a sign that was in violation. It was put up. It wasn't uh, supposed to be put up. So we got together and we said, what's going on with the signs? We looked at the ordinances and we said, if we're going to enforce this sign ordinance, then we have to do it across the board. Now, for years, there has been no enforcement on signs. 
there's only supposed to be one real estate sign on, on a building. There's like buildings with five real estate signs on them. Um, the mayor has pointed out multiple violations and, and it's litter. It's become litter because it has not been enforced. So of course, when you're enforcing something that hasn't been enforced in a long time, people are going to balk. So that's what we started. Now, the guys on code enforcement took pictures of all the different signs. We took them all to uh, Donna Barr, who checked to see if they were in violation or if they were, you know, were they going to comply. They were given a notice of, what, 15 days to comply. And then it got to the, to the point where, you know, if they didn't comply, then they were um, fine. I think that's the point where we're at. But you know, I mean, to not enforce is irresponsible and it makes the town look littering. And it's not in sync with the master plan. A lot of these signs are not. They don't enhance the town. They don't maintain the character or the charm. I mean, all you have to do is read the master plan under the signage and see what it says. Now, it's not my opinion. This is ordinance. These are the ordinances. We're code enforcers. We're supposed to enforce the ordinance. We have put our heads together and we are in discussion about uh, certain things concerning signage. I, I, I think that what, what is coming across is something that I think has been talked about. And again, in answer to what Michael said, I, 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 I already remembers this, but I remember a lot longer, is that this has been a continual issue. There are different policy issues on the sign orders. Some people want it one way, other people want it another. Some people don't have any problem with illuminated signs like I, I really don't, uh, or even electronic signs. I think that where we change signs on advertising on some of our billboards is, is it goes to the 17th century. It makes no sense to me. We should have electronic signs. Oh, come on, man. The light bulb wasn't invented in the 17th century. <laughs> right. No license. But all I'm saying is that in an age where we're trying to invite people to spend more time when it's dark out and our public lighting is dim, I don't have any problem with greater signage and with greater lights in our downtown and other areas. But there's always been a policy difference between some people who want to maintain a certain ambiance and others who want to move forward. Oh, yeah, look at the master so plan. We, we, well, the master plan is a piece of paper that we have a right and we have an obligation to review if it has to be changed, we can change it. What Michael is saying is, let, let's stop talking about it. Let's start looking at it. And we've been doing that since March. And, and I know that. But co let's come up with reasonable alternatives so that Mr. Scavone can go to the business community and say, this is what we recommended in last year. Um, however, it may have changed since last year. Let's get some more input. At, the sign ordinance it has like 40 different sections. As an attorney, I can't figure out what most of the things. Well, I think, can I you think, expound, oh, excuse me, uh, Mayor, on, remember we were talking, you were standing there, we were pointing to different buildings and how many signs are on there that shouldn't be on there. That is there. correct. Cer certain property owners have exceeded knowingly mm -hmm. what they are permitted to do. They try to sneak in different things, which human nature. One particular building had advertisements, almost billboards, for other entities, and they were even a closed institution that they were probably or not probably getting rent for. Right, but what I'm saying is that those are wrong. We should prove it. What Michael is saying is that we ought to really take a look at the entire picture. And we've already agreed to do that. Well, I think, I think one of the arguments that we have, before we blanket the town with violations, I think that we, we should contact uh, you know our residents and our business members before we blanket and have some sort of you know that type of uh, strong enforcement uh, uh, action. I mean, we've always been uh, transparent. We have always tried to have dialogue. I think by just simply just blanketing the town with enforcement uh, violations and now causing our residents and slash business owners. Uh, to now have to take a trip to court, I don't. I think that defeats the purpose of. Well, when they come in, they know that there's not supposed to be an interior illuminated open sign within 18 inches, and they they blatantly do it anyway. Well, I mean, so when, when the sign simply that? says open or closed, I mean, come on. I mean, well, no, I, personally, you know, I don't. 
what I, what I feel personally is that I don't think it adds to the look of the town to see the neon signs. Well, That's just my just opinion. Think, but the ordinance think, says no neon signs. I just so think that we, we owe the residents and our business uh, patrons as well as our owners the right for, to open dialogue before we blanket the town with violations. Well, River Center wants bigger signs and brighter signs. Well, you know what? Now, well, I'm not saying bigger and brighter is any better, but at least I think that we have to have dialogue. And, and we have. Mr. Spavone has been to our meetings. This, Mayor, may I for me? Yes, please. So besides, besides all that, I think what you need to do here is you need to put this thing on the back burner and let them turn the lights on because this is the complaints I've got is really hurting the businesses. And what started out as a lawn sign complaint has turned into, oh, wow, we're not supposed to have neon signs. Let's get them. It's not right. The business community strives hard. And we've always worked hard with the business community here. I think that, you know, Michael makes a point. We should have we should have got together with the community as far as the river center. Should have got together with the businesses instead of opening the gates and telling them to write that, right, right? Violation. It's not good for you as the mayor. It's not good for us as a council. It's certainly not good for me as a liaison at River Center. I got people calling me about their businesses that have neon signs in there since day one. You know what I tell them? Turn them back on. And that's why you see the sub shop on. That's why you see the blow back on. Because it is killing the businesses that we've been trying to promote over the last three years. There's a better way to handle it than the way that it was handled. But listen. The enforcement committee didn't know anything about it. Are you tell me that Mr. Sickles authorized that for them to go around and issue of summonses? Of course. He was right there. Yes. We okay. are enforcing an ordinance. Okay. Mayor, so to make a long story short, why it's being looked at, I think what you need to do is take this thing, put it on the back burner, and give them at least four weeks to come up with a solution for the side of You've got to let them turn the lights back. Gotcha. I think there's different ways well, to do it. Well, you have an opinion about that. That's fine. But you can't. You're not the mayor. You don't make the call. There's a vote here. Yeah, and there's, there's, and, there's, and, there's, and, and you don't literally I, open up the vote and say, wow, I don't like neon signs. Let me go around here and read a violation. I didn't say that. It's in the ordinance. Listen, that wasn't what kicked it off. And one thing, if you're talking about signs that have been inundated on property as far as brokerage or signs like that. It's like you wouldn't have to the neon signs like there was no you're wrong. Okay. It started with a well, then I apologize for being wrong. Sign. Mayor, you need to put the lights back on. And Mayor, I, I just I have no lights I have no problem with lights. I like lights. So put the lights on and took four weeks just, 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 just like to clarify that we did issue warrants. We did do the follow up inspections. Right. But when we got the in services multiple council people uh, Contact me with the service, council president, contact me with the service. We did not issue summonses on these violations. Uh, there are some other uh, signage that was issued summonses because there is no, I don't think there's any discrepancy such as uh, real estate signs in the right of way, things of that nature. We, we did address those with summonses. But these, because it was uh, some conflicting direction, we issued the notices, we did a follow-up, some have complied, some were working with zoning, uh, and, and the rest have raised questions. And after uh, input from several several people, including Council President Murphy, we did not issue the summonses because we knew this would be an issue. Well, and that's why it was broken. Could I just say something? I think that's why it's important to have the committee members together so that, because I'm not sure that I would have been in agreement on this, but it's just been like, wasn't even given any kind of a report about what was going on. So, I mean, in the future, I just think it would be helpful uh, to have several people there on the, from the council, um, the committee members, who can, uh, you know, three heads are better than one. And, um, I, you know, I, I, don't think, I, I don't think we would have taken this path. And it's important that our businesses uh, do well and that we, uh, that we improve the business climate. Uh, we've had businesses who have complained about many things, and I think that we've been striving very hard to help our businesses. And uh, I think this is something that you know could have been avoided. But it, obviously, we should be redrafting this whole signage thing, and, and that's what we're working on. Well, I'm glad to know that Donna Barr is. But when you don't enforce something, when you've got an ordinance and you don't enforce, people will take advantage and they will keep pushing and pushing. And that's what they've done. And we're at the point where our buildings are littered with signs. And when this sign was, um, when this one sign was, had a complaint, 
we said, well, if we're going to make him comply, we have to go across the board and look at all the other signs in town and make so them comply. So you, you, you are following up on, you know, uh, the River Center has a, uh, has a, um, a big committee. Uh, they do all of the visual improvement uh, review. He um, has been they, to our they, meetings. They, they, Yes, we've had multiple meetings. Where Are you we're aware working. of what they do at River Center, what the Visual Improvement Committee does? Yes. What do they do? Oh, is this a test ed? Yeah, it is. They, they, have, they have their ideas about signs. I think, okay. Be what that as may, they, when, when, when they're reviewed and they're approved, they are sent to the planning board if it's a, if it's a new business that's, that's uh, petitioning for a variance. My concern is that that new business not be um, hurt in any exactly. way Which going way? forward um, because there are businesses in town that have had variances granted to them by the board. Exactly, and those are non conforming pre existing, and we've already spoken about she's that. She's talking about yeah. something else, but let, let me just make short are, for a second. Yeah. What she's talking about, and there are examples, I'm not going to mention names, as a matter of fact, I don't even see one list, where recent applications have been approved by the board with representations made by the applicants as to what they were going to do. The day after they opened, after they were approved, they violated the terms that they had agreed to the night before, before the board. Those people should be fined. Absolutely. Those people should be stopped. There's one particular business that specifically had the plans that you and I reviewed approved at the board, the VIC approved it, River Center was happy with it. The day after the grand opening, they changed the entire storefront and they littered it with, you can't even see what's inside anymore because of all the handmade signs that they have that completely obliterate the streetscape that we were, the board was trying to, that's what Councilwoman Byrne is saying. So that has been a problem. Those people should be aggressive. Exactly. But they're not, they're they're not even there. But what I'm saying is that what Councilman DuPont is saying, what you're saying, the rest of the council, is that we ought to right. fast track this review. Right. Yeah, we ought to fast track the review by having a committee meeting mm -hmm. as quickly as possible involving other professionals, involving River Center, and, and, and then coming up with a recommendation. Yes, having, uh, have uh, the executive director for River Center, Mr. Mahern, and uh, Donna Barr meet and come back with some recommendations as to the, the um, you know, we had this too. I remember last year we had the idea, or two years ago, just get older, um, about you know uh, coming up with solutions that will make um, applications to our boards and uh, a little more efficient. Um, I'm not quite sure if we reviewed the signs, uh, but I think you're not part of that one. Yeah, I think that if you um, put to my mind, make a motion then there to have Mr. Scavone, Mr. O'Hearn, and Ms. Barr sit down and then come back with uh, some recommendations uh, to, the, to the mayor and council. I think that's well, the chair committee, of course. Yeah, okay, done. Of course. Yeah, the mayor. So what am I doing with the business? Are you going to be okay to re have these things suspended for maybe four yeah, weeks? What Monday? makes sense, councilman, is the following. Since we are reviewing an ordinance, since we are <coughs> taking it under advisement as a, as a group, we know that there are some issues that the application and the enforcement should be stayed until further action by the council. But Pat, even you said the ones that are in violation aren't on the list. You said, I don't even see them on the list. This is a deliberate attack on the on signs. And you have businesses in the downtown. You're gonna tell Red Bank subs, you're gonna tell uh, you're gonna tell Elsie's to take the sign down No, the We're saying it's stayed. That's what I'm saying. That's what I need to hear. That's what I just said. Okay. In other words, the enforcement is stayed until we take further action to decide what we're going to do. And we might have enforcement stays. Am I missing something? That means that anything that has been issued stops. There's no reason. So, so, so the borough is not going to prosecute. What about the um, signs on the buildings? Those, the real estate we're signs. We're reviewing everything. Let's take a look at everything together. That's what I'm Let's do it all in one stop. That makes more sense. Yeah, we'll do the inventory, but we won't take any uh, no. We'll, we'll list yeah. the problem so we make sure we address it. That's what that means. We're not, we're not, we're not prosecuting. Okay. Mr. Sickles, will you um, James. find a time? Turn the lights on. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll email Did everybody. Do that and make sure you, uh, Doreen, emails Mr. DuPont. 
We'll take care of it. Oregon, it's just yeah. come out. Okay. Good. And, and while we're on signage, um, uh, Councilwoman Burnham, uh, could you uh, give me an update as to my yeah, the photographs I sent you over the weekend about the uh, right-of-way signs that are it's literally... Down. It's taken down. Uh, you sent it to me on Friday, on a holiday weekend, okay? I called them on Saturday. The sign was taken down on Monday. Okay. So and thank what, you and, for and sending that to me. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other signs around town in, in the right-of-way, are they enforcing? We have there's our code enforcers. Okay. I'm sure they are. We're, we're enforcing all signs. Well, could you verify that and get back to me, please? I certainly will. Will you respond to my email? Because I've written you twice and you don't respond. There's, there's a motion and a second on staying. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I guess that's it for workshop, right? That's it, Mayor. So yeah, approve the second. minutes, May 28th, motion. So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mayor appointments are confirmed with respect to the participation of the green team. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, communications and uh, rather reports of mayor council committee members. I'd ask everyone to please be brief and limited just to their council committee. Yes, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, real quick, uh, we have the Town Holiday Car Show this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. As always, your presence is always uh, grateful so um, just let the rest of the council know it's always a good day uh, it's nine to four on saturday and sunday over the white street lot uh you should all go down there and enjoy yourselves thank you thank you cindy um again we've been working on the sign uh the sign, following the ordinance and trying to uh, de-litter the buildings and and uh, talking to donna about how to change the ordinances and make them easier make them more understandable regarding signs while well, maintaining the character and the charm of the town, um, which is in the master plan. I mean, we have ordinances. Ordinance, why have an ordinance if you're not going to follow and enforce it, is my, my thought. But sometimes things need to be um, tweaked, and I understand that. So we, our next meeting, we will obviously be doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy? Yes, I just have a report on the library. Um, uh, two part-time librarian positions and two part-time library assistants um, have been posted on not only the library website but also on the New Jersey uh, Librarian Association um, website. Um, and the library has undertaken an oral history project. Um, there's a student who's working on this and they need a volunteer photographer or a videographer. Suzanne, are you interested? <laughs> sure. Speak to Elizabeth, or if you know someone. I'm sorry, just joking. I mean, but. I can do it. Uh, but uh, that would be great. That would be real. I know everybody would appreciate that. Um, so I think that's an exciting uh, project, and it's one that's really important as well. Uh, the next meeting of the library board is Thursday, July 17th at 6.30 at uh, the library. And that's it. I, you forgot one thing, and I want to thank you and apologize. And that is, I want to thank you, Councilwoman, and I know that I speak for a library director for hosting a, a thank you for the existing board members and staff at your home uh, this weekend who have volunteered at the library. I was supposed to come. My dog and I fell asleep in the yard, and you didn't wake me up. I missed out on I missed out on good champagne. Can I say? But thank you. That's appreciated by everyone. Oh, um, just very briefly, on July 1st, uh, the Parks and Rec Committee met with um, the Red Bank Clay Courts Foundation, I guess, um, and they shared the proposal, and so um, we have the proposal now, and we will continue as, we will continue, no, no guarantees on anything yet. And um, finally, it's, um, summer camp is in force, uh, we make sure that our younger residents, parents are uh, enrolling them in all of our summer camp activities and also take advantage of fitness in the park, jazz in the park, and movies in the park this summer. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I, I wanted to congratulate uh, Councilwoman Lewis uh, on, on the inaugural startup of the Mohawk Pond uh, Fountain and Pond area that went live on Thursday. Um, we were joined by uh, uh, Gary and Terrence from uh, DPW for the first flip of the switch. 
And uh, Councilwoman Lewis has been working to restore that uh, area and fountain for many years, along with former Councilwoman Sharon Lee. So congrats to both of you on the job well done. It looks great. Uh, folks have commented uh, how wonderful it is to have that uh, up and running. Um, it'll also do some great things for the pond, keeping it healthier and allowing Aerates. the trout to grow. Um, and thank you, John, for coming out. Uh, on Thursday. Uh, Suited for Success Sock Drive. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, the so many folks who have dropped socks off uh, so far at lunch break. Um, after meeting with uh, Gwen Love and some neighbors and supporters, um, I mentioned at the last council meeting that I was looking for a, a, a sock commitment, um, and so far I have a commitment for more than 500 pairs of socks uh, for the program uh, from a very generous local entrepreneur. Uh, so I'll con uh, continue to see what other doors we can open to help those less fortunate. But I want to remind everybody, during the summer, lunch breaks, pantry gets very low. Hunger doesn't stop. Um, so if you're uh, going grocery shopping, you might want to think about picking up a couple of extra canned goods that you can drop off uh, to the lunch break pantry. Um, also, I've been working with the YMCA uh, Youth and Government staff on the formation of the Red Bank Youth Council. The Y is very interested in uh, partnering with the uh, borough this fall, and I'll meet with you, uh, Mayor and uh, Councilwoman Horgan and Lewis, to go over the formulation of this program and to uh, enlist and engage our young people in understanding the importance of municipal government as well as public service. Um, and then, uh, quickly, some folks may have noticed that the crosswalks of Broad Street uh, were being painted today. I, I just caution everybody to, um, or, or remind everybody to use caution uh, for the workers as you see them uh, spraying, uh, spraying paint and, and, and dusting the crosswalks uh, as you drive by. And if you're walking, don't step in the paint. Uh, historic Preservation Commission is holding a summer barbecue uh, and a historic inventory on the 19th of July, and the DPW committee is going to meet next week. Mr. Zipper, just a quick question on the crosswalks. Are they putting the sparkly stuff that uh, when lights hit it? They, they, had, the, they had the dust that they were going to that, okay, so good. I'm assuming that's, that's what that is. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mayor, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I, I have nothing more. <laughs> you, you, you jumped the gun earlier. 45 minutes. Two, two brief things. Uh, Councilman Zipperich did mention the YMCA, and thank you for reminding me. And probably it's a good time for the announcement to be made. But the YMCA, as uh, it normally does, holds a, an annual a gala uh, for its. Uh, activities and they normally honor um, a local institution and a local servant of the public um, um, and uh, philanthropic uh, community. I'm pleased to announce that we, the Borough of Red Bank, has been selected for the YMCA Annual Community Service Award for 2014 which will be presented uh, at their fundraiser and gala at, uh, I believe, it's September 27th or 28th, the end of September. So, um, yeah, I, it's, I believe it's our first award and um, from the YMCA, and it's an acknowledgement not only of uh, the support which our residents have given to the YMCA, but our schools have given to the YMCA the partnership that we have that's worked out well. Their expansion program, the new building, if anybody has not seen it, is extraordinary, it's state of the art, it was much needed uh, from the 1950 building that was there before and, has, and keeps us competitive. Uh, the relationship that the borough has with the YMCA is also, I believe, a stellar relationship. The executive director and her assistants um, meet with me on a regular basis at least once a month to discuss mutual plans and strategies for how we can contact them and reach our uh, critical residents. So I think it's a great acknowledgement by, by the YMCA for a community that has really rolled up its sleeves from um, sort of like a lethargic relationship with a really great community service organization and become a full partner. As I reminded the executive director and her staff that, uh, you know, when I was growing up, when Artie uh, was playing at the old Y, I never went there because I couldn't afford it, but um, there used to be three major urban Ys in Monmouth County, and that was the Long Branch Y, and that was the Asbury Park Y, and the, uh, the Red Bank Y. 
and the only one that remains is the Red Bank War. And that only hasn't remained, but it's doubled in size, it's doubled in its pants of outreach, and it's thrived, and I think in the way that we are working with them will be an even greater asset to our community partnering with, with the borough. So I'm very pleased that the Board of Trustees has uh, nominated the borough for uh, the award. The second also came as a surprise tonight, it comes from California, and I want to thank the council for supporting me on something that a lot of you people thought was probably a wacky idea. But uh, the Beagle Freedom Project of California has decided to present us and me with the Public Leadership Award because we are the first and only town so far in New Jersey that has decided to pass uh, a motion and a resolution that will move us forward on, a, on, a, on an important issue, which is the laboratory experimentation of dogs and cats in non-medical experimentation, mostly pharmaceuticals for how your face cream will adapt, uh, and hairspray. Unfortunately, the, the sad story is that beagles are normally used. And the further sad story, which has been kept secret from the industry, is that at the end of the experimentation, these dogs and cats may be perfectly normal, other than they're frightened to death, but um, they're euthanized. So the uh, Minnesota has now banned that procedure. Uh, New York is on the threshold of moving forward with it, and Red Bank was, I'm sorry? In, in Rhode Island. And Rhode Island. And Red Bank was the first town that started the initiative for New Jersey to move forward. Regretfully, we haven't heard from our state legislators and senators uh, hopefully they will move on the bandwagon and get this to a priority because it does mean the difference for thousands of little animals that could be adopted and the only thing the legislation says is that uh, at the end of their experimentation, instead of euthanizing them, give them to the ASPCA or other animal care agencies as long as they're healthy for possible adoption. So I think we have to move forward with it, but I just want to thank all of you for uh, supporting that initiative. I think the little critters really appreciate it and uh, we'll move forward. But thank you for that. Alan Hurst adopted it. I was just told a few minutes ago. Good. So moving. They asked for a copy of it and also whether they did adopt So we're moving forward. Thank you. Uh, communications and petitions. Um, request uh, number one through seven on a consent agenda motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. They've all been approved by special events. Any members of the public have any comments with respect to any resolution or ordinance on the agenda? Stephen. I have uh, questions about uh, 178, 79, and 80. Sure. Dan, could you address mm -hmm. them? Well, Oh, okay. I thought maybe you needed more information. Well, the, the tax appeal um, settlement is um, about 4.6 million. And the uh, credit uh, due to judgments is about 3.17 uh, million for a total of seven and three quarter million dollars. Uh, my question is, how does that uh, how does that impact our finances going forward? I usually ask, how did that happen? I'm tired of asking. So and now I, I'm asking, how does it impact us? Well, a couple of ways. Uh, if you want to address her, but we'll both address it. How's that? In the, in the first instance, um, the finance office has sort of figured how some of these are going to be either adjusting, most of them will be adjusted through credits. So in any event, there will be an adjustment on future taxes in terms of the credit. Hey, it does, does address this, but, but more importantly, you'll remember how we're addressing the overall pictures that this council has agreed to pass a, uh, an ordinance. We've adopted an ordinance that sets forth the evaluation to be done effective almost immediately. We've started the process. I, I think, Mr. Steve, Mr. Mayor, I, I think, Mr. Mayor, I think you've been in. I think you. Excuse me. No, but I'm trying to correct you. I think you're wrong in the assumption. 
that the credit is far less. The back of the page, or the second page, has the credit. Okay. We aren't responsible for paying back one point three million dollars. No, he knows that. May, may, may I? Sure. May I address the mayor? Um, I have. I hope you know that I have the utmost respect for the council and for you and for the council's council. And each time I ask about these things, I'm told about what we're doing uh, with respect to the change in how assessments are going to be made. And that's not my question. I understand what's coming. Um, I really want to know how we're going to fund whatever it is that we're responsible for funding Steve, may I with these that? judgments and appeals. Well, somebody, may I, let me ask this. I appreciate it. I'm the finance chair. You know, this uh, issue is a uh, sometimes a perplexing issue in how we fund um, you know, future tax appeals that we know that are coming down the pipe. Uh, we have set aside monies sometimes. I remember five hundred or six hundred thousand right. dollars was set aside in that budget. Was for, that was for bonding. We bonded that amount yeah. because it exceeded our um, estimates, uh, so to speak. So the we previous had, year was right. I think fifty thousand. And so what we do every year, beginning and we start this in December, is, is that we set up reserves. And we anticipate that our estimated reserves will cover that. We've also instructed our tax assessor to make sure that um, he keeps us appraised on a regular basis. Advised. Advised, thank you. I'm from Virginia, I'm sorry. Praised, well, appraised. Appraised, right. appraised, right. Good, good point. There was a good point. point slip. Thank you. Um, keeping us well advised. Um, of these um, tax appeals. Um, so the communication between uh, Eugenia and Mr. O'Hearn and Mitch Elias are absolutely critical. So between setting up reserves, um, the communication level uh, between the, the three individuals responsible for overseeing these tax appeals have been enhanced. And then the third thing is, the final issue, uh, is determining that the best course of action was the rebound. Um, I know that uh, we had a meeting on Thursday. I know that it's kind of varied off on your question. But the first two uh, categories are really how we are protecting ourselves for these tax bills. How are we going to pay what we need to pay now? We use our reserves. Our reserves are, are adequate at this point in time. But our we reserves will cover every dollar of what needs to be funded? You don't have that number in front of me. Uh, Eugenia, you can probably jump in. It's, 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 we have reserved some of that money and the other part, like they say, they fund it for so the remaining. Some this will, this will exhaust years. our reserves and we'll need to bond further money. If, we're, if we continue for next year, probably. Probably? Most likely. We also issue credits right going now, forward. Yes, and right now we are good. Well, that means that we won't be collecting it going forward. I mean, you pay for it now, you pay for it later. So right. We, still we won't be collecting, but we aren't giving back. We, but we will but budget going forward. But when you're running the store, right. you still need the money. Right. And if right. you don't have the money to run the store, you can't run the store. But we, but, we right. but we anticipate that in our budget. So when we when we are doing our budget, right, we do have that anticipation that there was a reserve. Is what Mike was saying. Yeah, but in addition to that, though, there's one more step that you take, and that is through cost cutting measures, you anticipate that you may not have the income or revenue. And so through cost cutting, cutting measures, we've also saved in that regard. What are we going to do going forward to fund this, these payments, these credits, whatever? Well, are we going you, to are we going to have um, more cost cutting? I mean we haven't funded this with our reserves. We need to bond we have money. we have reserves for this year. The question is, what do we do for the upcoming years? We are anticipating some money. The tax reevaluation should take care of a lot of that and should stop a lot of all these tax appeals to go point. In the future. But, but how do we pay for this? 
Now, for this, we have the resource and we have the funding in the past. And, and how much bonding do we need to do for going forward for this? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why there's so much difficulty answering this question. Well, wait, well, wait strike that. No, 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 no. I, I, I take a little offense to that. I'm sorry, I mean no offense. Uh, um, you, you imply that there's difficulty um, or at least a Lack of clarification. I think that. Well, what's my error? Uh, I'm having no, 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 no. I, I may not have been clear enough, but I think the finance committee and through with Regina, um, Mr. Sickles, what we have done is we have progressively set reserves up that we think are realistically to pay for the uh, uh, tax appeals for this year. Which year? This year. This is 11, 12, and 13. This year. But they're payable this, this year. year. They haven't been paid. So this is in the reserve for this year because it was open items. Just because there's multiple years, Steve, uh, to, to Councilman DuPont's, the, 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 the council deals with it on a budgetary basis, on a year-by-year -year basis, and they set aside money or bond or whatever the case may be to look at what's in the pipeline. Try to, and it, it, it's, it's not always easy because it's uncertain as to how some of these appeals are going to play out. But the, the council does, they're very proactive, and they do the best they can under the circumstances to deal with it. I don't doubt that for a moment. And what you guys do is, I mean, people are not lining up to take your jobs. So, you know, how, what do we need to do to pay for this now? They, they explain it. There's. They, they're not paying for it now. It's a credit, and you're, to your point, I mean, it affects the, the revenues going forward. It could have, and, and to Councilman Dupont, uh, potentially affects how the, the, the governing body looks at its expenditures and budget. But they're not they're not cutting a check for that. It's going to be a credit against future taxes. So the revenue will decrease, and they'll have to do with that. And deal what will be the impact of that? I, I can't answer that question, but um, no. obviously there's there's always there's going to be some impact that will have to be done. Revenue decreases. We look at the expenditures. We look at the allocation of those expenditures. I mean, for example, I'll take one department alone. We've not had cutbacks in the department, but because of internal administrative savings, Councilman Murphy's department, the police department, is able to save this year alone with promotions, with advancements over $150,000, which is then going into the general um, uh, allocation, general budget. So what I'm saying is that you have to deal with the situation mid-year and at the end of the year in terms of what your resources are, but these have been reserved and we have had allocations that these were outstanding liability items that we have to make provisions for, as Mike was saying. These are all um, commercial? No. There are some commercial and some residential. Two, the uh, 17179 uh, and 180, those were residential. Residential is also. The only uh, commercial, it's actually a professional office building on Broad Street, was the uh, 333. The, um, the 179 and 180 was not apartment complexes? No. No. Manor Drive is no. probably just a condo. No, that, that, that's, a safe, that's a fee simple unit, and so is the other unit on uh, Hilltop unit. Terrace. So 18 Hilltop Terrace is a residential unit. unit. It's a house. It's a house. Yeah. Okay. Single family. We, we get the appeals are not just the appeals are not just limited to commercial properties. There no, are there are residential appeals in the pipeline as well. So yeah. the the, um, the judgment that there was a uh, overpayment of one million eight hundred and twenty two thousand dollars was. It's, there wasn't an overpayment. No, no, no. No. There was an assessment. assessment. There was an assessment reduction. Here, let me Not see. an overpayment just, just of $1 million. Yeah. Okay. There was an adjustment in 2000. I'm talking about 333 Broad Street. went from approximately $1.8 to $1,650,000. Then the next year, it went to $1,550,000 and then $1,450,000. Right. So, so then then the, for each of those years, there's an associated credit. And the credit, the total credit for all those years is fifteen thousand forty six yeah. twenty nine. So they basically they over they overpaid fifteen thousand dollars, not one point five million. Okay. Makes you feel a little bit better. Makes you feel a lot better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It is confusing. I agree. It's better. Okay. Thank you. 
Any other comments or questions on resolutions? If not, motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Moving on to ordinances, ordinance 2014-13 is our uh, officer's ordinance and office uh, ordinance fixing compensation for officers' position and employees of the borough of Red Bank. This does not, as I said before, does not establish the compensation rate for any individual member of the administrative staff. What it does is it creates a range of possible options for remuneration from a low end to a high end, depending on compensation, depending on time of service, depending on credentials, and it is consistent with what this council and previous council have been talking about for a long time, but never adopted. So it gives the council flexibility in terms of setting a salary range or an actual salary amount when someone is hired, um, depending on that person's expertise. Every other municipality in our area has adopted a what is known as a range ordinance so that we don't have to change a particular salary ordinance every single year, but as long as we hire somebody within that range and they're not under or over, then we can make that appointment without changing the ordinance. Any members of the public wish to comment or have questions? If not, a motion to close? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion to adopt, and then you'll ask your question. Second. Second. Question. Yes. Um, how many deputy clerks do we have? Deputy clerks for what? We have two deputy no, clerks. No, deputy clerks for what? Well, I think it's just the title. You're talking about the borough administrator? Like the borough administrator we have a is clerk. a deputy clerk. We have a clerk. Right, then we no. have Pam. Pam is the clerk. She used to be the deputy clerk along with Mr. Sickles. No, Mr. Sickles. Now, we have a clerk, that's Pamela. Yes, I know. Or we have a deputy clerk, and that's Bonnie. That's who? Bonnie. 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 Stanley does have the title of deputy clerk in his title. That's, yes, that's, 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 that's only that. if somebody's unavailable. On vacation, yes, but you get, you get paid for that. Uh, no, I just have to tell her I get paid. Okay. Cover, because, so I was talking to Pam about it, because there, at one time there were more than Pam, you know this. At one point, Bonnie and I were both deputy clerk. I promoted to clerk. The right. administrator has always stayed on there because if, if I'm on vacation, Bonnie goes home sick, if something, if something has to be signed, Stanley can sign as a clerk. He right. does not get paid extra for that. Okay. Well, that was my question. Yeah. Thank you. So we only have one deputy clerk. That's the only one. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, there's been a motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. All right, on resolutions by consent, resolution 14178, including resolution uh, 14194. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 14183, a resolution appointing Pamela Mubeck as acting director of the Red Bank Parks and Recreation Department. Motion? So moved, Mayor. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just really wanted to ask the policy, what's the policy to decide to appoint someone as acting director? I'm sorry, what's the policy? What, what is our policy in determining and in appointing someone as acting? In the, in An acting director, generally speaking, uh, is the person in charge during the temporary or provisional uh, absence of a director. That's all it is. No change in money, no change in... Uh, there's a 5%? There's a 5%? Okay, so there was one. So there's a motion, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now we have proclamations. Proclamation appointing um, Nicola Tesla days. Whereas on behalf of the residents of Borough Red Bank, I'm happy to join with the Tesla Science Foundation in offering this proclamation to recognize and celebrate the anniversary of Dr. Nikola Tesla's birth. And whereas born in Serbia, Dr. Nikola Tesla and his youth immigrated to America, becoming a citizen of the United States, where he worked in over 700 of his patented inventions. And whereas many of his groundbreaking discoveries include and are not limited to fluorescent lighting, AC motor, remote control, wireless transmission of electrical energy, and the Tesla coil. And don't forget that one. And whereas in pursuit of what you term the wheel work 
of nature, Dr. Nikola Tesla partnered with George Westinghouse to create the world's first hydroelectric dam at the Niagara Falls that later proved that the entire Earth itself could be used as a massive conductor. And whereas Dr. Nikola Tesla joined the prestigious ranks of people such as Volt, Watt, OHM, et al. in 1956 when the unit of magnetic flux density was established as the Tesla unit in his honor. And whereas through the uh, efforts of the Tesla outreach and curriculum program, students now have access to Tesla-style high-energy physics experiments that will inspire further breakthrough energy research, and whereas all of humanity owes a debt of gratitude to Dr. Tesla's innovations that enhanced our quality of life so suddenly and permanently, it is fitting that everyone everywhere acknowledge Nikola Tesla's work, which has modernized life for Americans and all of mankind. Now, therefore, I must call Madam Mayor of the Borough of Nevada, who hereby henceforth proclaim July 9th and July 10th to be known as Nikola Tesla Days, along with the citizens of the Borough of Red Bank. I give special recognition to the Tesla Science Foundation. I urge everyone to join this advanced research institution in celebration of the appropriate activities and observances. I, I have a comment to make. It's very, whose idea is this? It's, it's very timely. My nephew, who lives in Shoreham on Long Island, uh, Tesla's last laboratory, it's the last building that is still standing, uh, he's involved with if, I'm not sure of the name, it's a Friends of the Tesla Laboratory, and they are trying, they want to restore it. And Tesla at the time, I believe this was a, the beginning of the 20th century, had the idea of building this tower which would allow the whole world to have electricity, and J.P. Morgan was financing it. And Tesla had this idea of you're just putting like sticks in the ground. I mean, I'm not a science major, so I can't, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can't say anything about that. But J.P. Morgan said, well, how am I going to get a return on my money? And he said, no, it'll be free. So that quashed that, and the money was taken away. And so he never finished this tower, but the footprint is still there. And so it's very interesting, because my nephew is very involved in it. And we were talking about it when I saw him uh, not too long ago, uh, actually at Thanksgiving, about uh, Tesla, and I had read about him years ago, but he also was a contemporary of uh, Thomas Edison, and I think Thomas Edison obviously overshadowed him, but Tesla has never gotten the recognition that he deserves, so I'm glad that we're doing this. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Um, so, I, I, since you don't think that he's gotten enough recognition, I think that all of us should visit Dr. Tesla because right now there is a bust of Dr. Tesla right here in New Jersey, Where? in Rahway. Uh, the city of Rahway has uh, uh, established a bust of Dr. Tesla, and the other is a larger bust of the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. This comes to us because of a request by some students uh, of our own Red Bank Middle School. <coughs> and these, uh, Red Bank Middle School and these students for the past two years have, on their own initiative, been so impressed, understandably so, by Dr. Tesla, that they've had a Tesla outreach and curriculum program at Red Bank to educate people like us who were not exposed to the beauty of Dr. Tesla. So uh, I think it's wonderful that these kids are actually teaching us a lot. Right. So and that's so where it were, comes from. So we go there and find out what the Tesla coil is all about? Because uh, very important to help. Yeah, I, I want you to test Tesla coil and report back to me after you've tested it. Okay. Was there a teacher involved, or how did the kids get interested in Yeah, there, are, there, there was a teacher involved uh -huh. in science, and, and so these kids now for two years in a row have been a groupies for Dr. Tesla. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to tell my nephew. He'd be interested. Your nephew would be pleased. Um, payment of vouchers be resolved by the Mayor Council Council bills be paid on the tax registry totaling $1,209,266.43 motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any old business? I have some old business, Mayor. Um, at the last meeting I had spoken about the um, accumulated uh, unused sick days and how I thought we needed to amend our policies to reflect the state and the county. And Mr. O'Hearn, you were going to come up with an ordinance or a resolution or something that said that we, instead of, you know, like the cap, like the 
county and the state caps us at 15, caps at 15,000, and Red Bank caps it at 260 days. That's not true at all. Who tells you that? Hold on. That's not all because I the Red Bank the ordinance was one of the first ordinances in Monmouth County. Hold on, Cindy. And maybe um, we'll, we'll get to the confusion. We were one of the first towns in Monmouth County that actually tapped those hirees after a certain time at fifteen thousand dollars. Well then why does then our Hold policies on. don't say that? You, you will you will permit me to answer as I permitted you to question, I hope. I'm sorry. So we did that. We did that in well, the can I see the ordinance that? or the resolution Hold that on states. for a second. We did it in the term of Mayor McKenna. I was council president at the time. Now, the proof of the pudding is we have had dozens of people in the police department, DPW, and this building retire where the only thing that they have received is a maximum of $15,000. However, there were exceptions. And those exceptions were those individuals who were hired prior to the change in our policy, which is enshrined in the Policies and Procedures Manual of the Borough of Red Bank, and they were protected by contractual right because they were hired and were part of the system before. Those are the only exceptions that we have, and we cannot change them because it's a contractual right. Okay, now, I understand but, but that. to say that we don't have it is erroneous. All right, I'm looking at the personnel policy book that says the 260 days, and it says it twice. And what I'd like to see is the resolution or the ordinance that states exactly what yeah. you're saying. That's I have I have not seen that. That needs to be amended. My suspicion is it was done by resolution, that is and it never got incorporated into yeah. the. Because when you do a resolution. Yeah, all I'm saying is that we've been living yeah. with it. Well, I'd like to see it in the policy. I would well, like to see yeah. 260 well, days gone. Is that policy completed? I got this from Pam. Well, you know, um, you know what, uh, Mayor, if I, if I might be permitted. Yes, 6-20-2014. Mayor, if I have a question. Yes, Mayor, if I, have, if I might be permitted, maybe I can make a motion to authorize uh, Mr. Hearn to um, amend that policy to make sure that it is in. Right. Um, uh, Conjunction with our ordinance that's on the books, and I'd so, like to see the ordinance. I just right. So if I, I'll make that. I made that motion. I'm sure Thank that someone's going to second it. Yeah, I'll second it. Right. Well, there. The point is, you can The point is, it's still fifteen thousand. It doesn't matter what it says. It's no. already been passed a resolution that's fifteen thousand. It's been top since 1904. So just show me the so, resolution. That's what it's going to matter. They're going to amend this in the book, and they're going to amend this. Good. Next to the neon sign, but it's still. Okay. It's still when they make rules, rules are leads, you interpret what you want to interpret. Use a little common sense in the process. Okay. So All in favor, nobody aye. Aye. I just, aye. I just, aye. I I just have one last question. Yes. I, I over. But um, we amended our uh, uh, outdoor cafes, and I had sent uh, a piece of correspondence to you about a particular piece of property that had uh, expanded. We had approved, uh, or the board. Had approved you their had a question, if I recall, on Pazzo. Yeah, and I just wanted to understand whether those, um, the further expansion of uh, outdoor dining space uh, is above and beyond what the board that, did. That's an board. extraordinarily good question. And, you know, I mean, I, I mean, certainly don't want to do, do, do anything to hurt, hurt our merchants, but I just wanted to understand going forward. Uh, well, my recollection, my recollection is this: they had outdoor dining, and they came to us and they said we want to enclose the outdoor dining. The council, to accommodate them, said, if you think it helps you, we don't have any problem in doing it because the sidewalk is wide enough to do it. They've done it; it's very successful. It's outdoor dining all year round, which is wonderful. Then I saw your picture, and you're right. At some point in time in the past couple of weeks, they've been putting uh, tables and chairs outside of the enclosed area. That, in my opinion, is an expansion of the previous approval 
and encroachment on the sidewalk. Now, if the council wants to revisit that issue and not permit it because they enclosed what they were given and now they're taking more, that is certainly within the purview of the council to do. If, we, if you want to reopen that resolution, we can reopen it right now because it is, it's a policy issue. Well, I asked the question because I... Yeah. Yeah. One of the planning board members is very proud of the fact that when they were when they were um, designing the PRC building, was that they had that large walk, side, this, side this, that large yeah. sidewalk setback, which sort of opened up the avenue. Absolutely. Um, and he's still very proud of that, um, which you know I, can, I, I commend him for. But now we have enclosed that sidewalk, and now we are further reaching, you know, permitting the, the, the merchant to reach further outside that scope. And I just wanted to understand why we're, you know, we'll let them go, you know, another row of tables next year when sidewalk cafes come, and it was on a consent agenda. Well, so if, if, we all just sort of. If, if you take a look at it, if you take a look at it, they would probably be able to do it if this council were to give them the approval to do it, as long as they keep a the standard handicap accessibility uh, thoroughfare there. Now, again, that is discretionary. You don't have to do it. We can revisit that ordinance, bifurcate it, take a vote on it right now. This was resolution 14 20 It was uh, approved by consent, but I don't realize that the council realized that. I did. I did. I did. I did too. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if, if that's a council pleasure, we can do it. I, I just don't know. I, I think that's the goal that we've taken our vote, but I just wanted to answer that question. We've taken our vote, but we can revisit the vote. It's up to you guys. I'm good with the way it is. I think there's plenty of room to move around. I don't know why you, why you want to rock the boat. I don't get it. I really don't get it. There's enough room for a wheelchair to get past those All the vehicles. There's 10 feet. They wouldn't just sign up. There's 10 feet. Yeah, I mean, Artie and I can dance on that sidewalk. There's plenty of room. There's a lot of work in it. Mr. Mayor, are we done with that? I just have one more thing after old business. Okay. Um, the vision committee, we are moving forward. We've got, we've just about nailed down some dates. We're working on our artists. And so hopefully soon I'll be able to make an announcement about the Count Basin 365 cultural series. Great. Anybody else? I, I have one more thing. I just wondered what was going on with the living shoreline and we're moving forward on that. Have been working on the Great. Have we made a decision on that? No. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we're going to have to take an adjournment uh, for an executive session to deal with uh, uh, borrowing property. Did we do new business? Uh, we did. Motion to close. Just let me tell, tell you this. Under new business, the mayor had said to me, <laughs> this is new business. New business. Anyway, the mayor had said to me that um, on doggy days, on doggy Tuesdays, that the dove wouldn't let people in with dogs. That was their policy. Well, they're going to let you do it now. Well, my dog's not going to go with you. Can, you can I'm eat glad. in the outside area with, with your dog. Well, that's wonderful. That's great. And, and the Board of Health is okay with it? He said it's fine. All right, the Board of Health did. Tell the health inspector. I didn't speak to the Board of Health. Well, aren't you in charge of the Board of Health? I don't think there is a Board of Health, Ed. All right, good. There isn't. There's no one. Thank you. 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 Pam, you know. I think it's great news. It's great news. It is. I mean, Gaetano's let you sit outside with a dog. Mrs. Murphy, I've got two dogs if you want. Got a Burmese mad dog. Well, there are two dogs. Just like All right. We'll go with the dogs. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right furiously writing during that conversation, so I would just like to say um, 
a couple things to um, clarify. Um, first of all, um, I'm thank you so much for uh, what you did tonight with the signage. It's been a huge issue in the business community over the past week, and um, we really appreciate that you have agreed to look at the sign ordinance and that you're um, staying the uh, summonses and warnings at this point. Um, and I know that the business community is going to be very appreciative of that. Um, I do want to say that um, I was only at one meeting, so I was not at several meetings. No, I was at one meeting, that March meeting, and I believe um, I asked at that meeting to look at the sign ordinance, and I brought up that we had looked at this, uh, that River Center had sent a letter back in July that had not been um, addressed. And um, the sign ordinance, as you all know, is incredibly unwieldy. And it's very difficult for the businesses that are coming in to know what regulations. There are places in town that allow illuminated signs. And it is impossible. It took me three hours yesterday, and I'm well familiar with the sign ordinance, to figure out which wall signs applied to a certain building in town. Because it is very unwieldy, and these businesses don't know when they come in. And it's impossible to, for them to figure it out. Um, and the only other thing I want to say is that River Center does not want bigger and brighter signs. That is not at all what is in that letter. Um, we've talked about uh, letter size and, and the, of how much signage is allowed. And um, a lot of it actually is uh, uh, restricting some certain things. But all of our suggestions are um, uh, variances that are routinely granted by the Planning or Zoning Board. And we just feel like if they are going to grant the variances uh, routinely, why make the business community and some of these small businesses pay the thousands of dollars that it takes to go for a variance and just change the sign ordinance. So thank you for your willingness to look at that and do that. Yes. I think I turned it off. I'm sorry. Rose Castillo, 190 River Street. Um, first, I would like to say thank you um, to a previous request about the speeding over on River Street. I know right now it's a moot point because school is not in session, but somebody was active in getting a digital speed sign. The negative is it's on the wrong side of the road because it's on the uphill rather than the downhill side. And two, it is blocked by a tree, so who's ever driving up the street would not be able to see it anyway. So, positive thank you for reacting to my request and secondly if we can get a fix before school starts that would be wonderful for the kids protections and secondly very short very short thank you to the parks and recreations for coupling with the other towns in little league we it has been such a positive experience and everybody knows i'm very much into baseball and red bank 12 u out of 17 teams Number one and number four, both our 12U teams were on the top of the Little League for Red Bank, Shrewsbury, Little Silver, Rumson, and Fairfield. Yeah. So Great. thank you, Parks and Recreations. Yeah. Thank, you thank you for your volunteerism and for supporting it. Anybody else? Thank you. Make it up. There's there a motion to adjourn to executive session for purposes of discussing property issues, however, no final action. Second. Second, Mayor. Favor? Aye. Thank you.